Hey friends, welcome to my channel. I am Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. All right guys, today we are talking one of my favorite subjects in the whole wide world. Can you guess what it is? We're talking eyeshadows today. And I'm gonna do this video a little bit different. I'm thinking it could be a series, but I'm gonna ask you guys what you wanna see. So we're gonna do Saint comparison swatches. We're gonna focus on swatches today. Um, and that's because for one, if you don't know, there is a big sale going this week and there's a lot of eyeshadow. So if you're watching this currently, it's going on. Now, there's nothing worse in the world than when you get a new eyeshadow and it looks almost identical to something you already have. Or it's close enough that you're like, I really didn't need both of these, right? So we're gonna do swatches based on color families, like similar ones that I'm like, you do not need both of these because you can make this one look like this one, just apply less, all of those type things today. So I'm gonna go through some of the ones that I think are the most similar, and then I'm just gonna run down and show you guys swatches of all of each color family. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching. Be sure to like and subscribe so you can see the next video in the series. And thanks for being here. friends let's get into it so if you don't know August rush is happening this week Monday through Friday these are all the eyeshadows that are currently on sale discounted from 20 30 40 and 50 percent off you guys this is normally what I keep all my eyeshadows in I feel like it's empty <laughs> I'm like where are all my shadows oh wait they're all on sale. I'm getting a lot of questions on comparison swatches. I'll be honest, over the years, I feel like I've done a lot of eyeshadow videos. I have ones based on swatches uh, for your eye color. I've done them, whether they're cool undertoned, warm undertoned, more neutral. I've done them for my category system. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that's a whole nother thing. Um, I will link the video down below. I have an eyeshadow resource that explains that. My goal has always been to help you guys be able to choose eyeshadows as easy as possible because eyeshadow should be fun, not hard or stressful. And it should enhance your eyes, not make you look older. And I'm coming from a person who I did not wear eyeshadow for years before coming an artist. And of course, when I became an artist and I had all these eyeshadows, I'm like, I got to learn like how to do this thing. Right. And so uh, this is kind of just a system I created based on Saint shades only so that when you're picking a shade online and you can't swatch it for yourself next to other shades, you kind of have an idea of like, what are the lightest colors? What are the number one shades? If it's a two or three, like twos are gonna be lighter than those three shades. Like it gives you an idea of like which shades are matte, which sh shades are shimmers, and which shades um, have enough contrast so when you're putting them on the eye. And that's one of the biggest things I look for when I'm helping somebody create an eye look. I hear it all the time where people are like, oh, but like it looks like one color all over. And I put like three shades on. Why can't I tell the difference? And there's could be multiple reasons, but I feel like the biggest reasons is people are drawn to a certain color family. And when I say color family, I mean like, okay, you have, I have green eyes, I have hazel eyes, so plums and purples tend to make my eyes pop more. And people tend to know that about eye color, right? Like each eye color has their complementary pop color that makes their eyes stand out. And so then you start just buying shades, all the shades in that color family. So you're drawn to mauves, purples, plums, because it's great for your eyes, right? But then what happens is you're applying all colors of the same color family to your eye at once. 
and they all just kind of blend together and look like one color and you have no definition of your eye and you're using all these techniques to enhance your eye, yet you're just getting one color to blur all together. And so I feel like this video, I've never done one of just color families so that you guys can see how close each one of these colors are and so that you can see if they're contrasting enough to be able to use them next to each other. Because if they're really similar swatched, usually on the eye, you're not gonna be able to tell a difference. They're gonna look like one color. And then it's kind of pointless, in my opinion, to put them all on there at the same time. You know what I mean? You need a difference in tone, a difference in depth, difference in brightness in order to make your eyes appear bigger or more awake or more dramatic, whatever the goal is for your eye look. Knowing color is everything, but um, it is really hard. I'll be honest. Saint's website is not accurate. That's why I do these videos. That's why you guys love these videos because I, uh, some of the colors look nothing like they do online than they do in person. Like not even close, like Everest, for example, I'll show a picture here. Everest looks brown, taupe. <laughs> it, I mean, I think that's why some of these shades are on sale. I think it's clearing inventory. I don't know, but just my guess after being an artist for six years, I assume that it's clearing inventory. Um, and I'm guessing the shade didn't sell because it's so inaccurately depicted. This is Everest. It's actually a really pale gray. We don't have anything like this color. It's got a slight shimmer in it. It's beautiful, but it's not at all what it looks like online. And so I'm gonna do some families of, I don't know, family categories. I don't even know what to call them. But we've got a lot of these sale shades, so shop them by Friday. Once uh, Friday's over, the sale will be over. So it goes till the 25th at midnight Ma Mountain Standard Time. But if you're watching this later, I would love to hear from you guys. And I really want to get some feedback on what is your pain point when it comes to eyeshadow? Is it application? Is it longevity? Is it mm, for your eye shape, for your eye color? Is it just picking colors to put together? I've been getting a lot of that. So I feel like this is a great one to show you guys what the colors actually look like in real life. And then if you guys need help on how to put them together, because I have my category system, so it's like you pick one, two, three, four, or five, and you know where to put them on the eye but picking shades that go together that don't look like one color all over sometimes is a little bit trickier for people. So I'm hoping this video will kind of show you some contrast, so you show you the differences between some of these colors, and you let me know what you would like to see from me next in the comments below. I appreciate it so much. Everyone's asking me if these colors are like being discontinued, and I'm like, I sure hope not. I would cry because some of my favorites are in here, like some of my all-time favorites. So I'm hoping maybe, maybe that means we'll be getting more eyeshadows. It has been a long time since we've gotten new ones, but I won't hold my breath. I know nothing. I wish I knew something to tell you guys, but your guess is as good as mine. I usually find out these things days before you guys, if that. <laughs> so, all right, I first am going to go through and I want to just swatch for you guys here on camera. The ones that I think are so similar, you don't necessarily need both of them. Um, and then I'm going to go through each color family and just show you guys on my arm with what color each one is. And I'm hoping that will help. Obviously I'll take pictures. So you guys have something to reference as well. And always know that my eyeshadow resource is linked in the box below the video. Um, it's also in my link in bio over on Instagram. 
and you can just click that out and request and it'll send the email straight to your inbox. All right, let's get started. It's really weird for me to do an eyeshadow video and not have on eyeshadow or not put on eyeshadow. Okay, let's start in the one category. This is the highlight shade, lighter than your skin tone, gives that brightness and that pop. Um, I'll be honest, there's not a whole lot that are super similar here. Oh man, I forgot I have my own personal eyeshadows over here. Okay, so the first one, you guys see me use these interchangeably like every day. This is my go-to brightener, okay? This is Drift, this is Sabrina. <laughs> People ask me all the time, which one? Doesn't matter. I'm kind of scared that they're gonna get rid of one of them because they're just so similar. So Drift was the newest addition. To me, I tend to put this one in my compact. It gives me a little bit more of a pop, um, just a little bit more. Now, I don't know if everyone would be able to notice the difference or not. Sabrina, I wore it for years, but can you see how um, Drift is just a little bit brighter? Okay, so if you're like, I don't want that much brightness, um, then maybe start with Sabrina. Now, Sabrina is, they're both gonna be more of the really light catching type brighteners. Right. Rome also gets kind of thrown in there, but I think Rome is in a category all by itself. Rome is darker. It does have shimmer, so you can tell the difference. I do think there's, uh, I used to not think that it mattered to get both, but if you have mature eyes and you want less shimmer, but you still wanna be able to brighten, and say you don't want a matte, which won't catch the light, this is Cupcake, you can get that with Rome. It catches the light, but it's subtle, and it's just like that perfect champagne color that's not so jarring, will not emphasize wrinkles and fine lines around our eyes, kind of like these can, and is a great if you want light on the lid. If I'm wanting it on my lid, I will go with Rome every single day. And I tend to just keep these to my inner corner and under my brow. And that's the only places I tend to use them. In comparison with Aries and Unicorn, Sabrina Drift are much more of that champagne yellow undertone. And Aries Unicorn is more white. And I'm talking like these are white. This is more champagne. Do you see the difference? It has more yellow in it. These are more of that icy brightness. And this one is the very fallout-ish. That's not a word. This is the chunky shimmer. So I have an entire video also for maybe shades to avoid if you have mature eyes and you don't want a chunky shimmer. Our shimmers are all like listed the exact same online, but there is a difference. This is all considered shimmer and so is this one that looks almost like a glitter when applied. But the difference between something like Rome and Aries is huge. So um, I do have that in the eyeshadow resource as well, like colors to avoid and colors that are good for mature eyes if you're wanting to start with a subtle shimmer. Okay, one of these is on sale, Sis. And then Soulmate, super popular. They are so close. <laughs> um, like when swatched, it's hard to tell the difference. Soulmate is slightly lighter. Do you see the difference? They both have that really foiled, more of a chunky shimmer. Um, so I tend to use them for brighteners. Um, this is a little bit harder for me to use on the lid because I have pretty mature eyelids. Um, but if you're careful or use something like a glitter glue to really make sure it adheres well and doesn't fall out, it can work. So Soulmate and Sis, they're so similar. I really don't necessarily think people need both. Here they are in the 10, you can tell. Soulmate's just a touch lighter. They both have that major like bling bling <laughs> shine factor though. So these two colors are both matte 
and very similar in color. They just have a little bit different depth. Okay, so we have Paris and Mama. Again, very close. Paris is gonna be a little bit lighter. Mama's a little bit darker, but it just kind of depends on the look you're going for um, and your skin tone maybe. The more fair you are, you might be better off with something like Paris. But on, I don't notice a huge difference. This one's obviously gonna be lighter on the lid. It depends on the look you're going for, but they're very close. Now on Wednesday, if you look, is kind of like, in my opinion, in between the two. Paris on Wednesday, Mama. Maybe it should be like that. But it is one that has like a subtle shimmer. I don't consider this like one of the normal shimmers you can kind of see. It just barely catches the light and it's not matte, but it just catches the light. To me, that's called more of a satin formula, but you can see how similar in tone it is to Mama, and it just is a little bit less matte. So I would say if you want a full on matte Mama on Wednesday, if you want to try something with a little bit more sheen to it, but all of these colors I could use interchangeably as a look on the lid to give me a pink lid, right? Peppa is another one that is very similar in depth almost to on Wednesday, but has a different shimmer. It has more of a shimmer like Crush, um, in my opinion, but you see how similar they are in depth. There's not a huge difference. So to me, I don't think you necessarily need both on Wednesday and Peppa, um, unless you want a little bit of variation in the sheen. They look very similar on the eye. This is why I, I have, I had back in the day, like swatched all of the like pinks next to each other and like tried to keep those color families together. My pink swatches, I remember being like, you cannot tell the difference between those colors in a photograph. So if they look alike, it's because it's really hard to capture on my arm. Okay, next one I'm gonna do is one of my easiest ones. I'm always like, you don't need both of these. I, I, I still can't tell the difference when they're next to each other in the den, like in my palette, I can't tell the difference. So the original one was Bend and Snap. Okay, it's a beautiful like mauve purple undertoned shimmer. And then the other one is on sale right now and it's Gigi. It, like on camera, I feel like this one looks a little bit more silver. So bend and snap and it does. Like a touch lighter a little bit more silver foil, but like the texture of them is similar. They are so similar. So I've always told people you don't need both. If you already have been in Snap, you don't need to go get Gigi just because it's on sale. I, I, I mean, come on. Would you be able to tell the difference of those two on the eye? No, and you wouldn't ever want to wear both of those at the same time. It's like the same shade. So the next ones we're gonna do are neutrals. Um, when it comes to a neutral mid-tone shimmer eyeshadow, we have a lot, but it's, I feel like because neutrals are popular, right? And they're all just different undertone, but they're very close. Um, I used to think that, cause these were the two original, I, I used to think that these two were like identical. And now I see they're not, the more I learned about undertone. So this is Foxy. Okay, it's just a very neutral brown shimmer, right? And so you might be like, okay, Sarah, like how, 
once you start swatching other ones next to it, you can see more of that undertone, but it's really hard to see the undertones in the pictures online. So this is my Ride or Die Bright Eyes. Love, obsessed with this shade. Okay, can you see the difference? Okay, can you see how this is a little bit warmer, less neutral, it's got a little bit more gold in it, meaning it's gonna be warmer, okay? So now I feel like Foxy is actually more similar to one that's on sale, which is Hot Chocolate. Now these two, I get <laughs> confused in my palette. Now I will say the consistency is a little bit different on Hot Chocolate. It's one of those more chunky shimmers, in my opinion. Okay, so now you can see, this one's more gold. You can see that this one has more purple in it. Can you see that? Not much, it's, I mean, it's just a little bit more purpley undertoned than Foxy. So Foxy I'm still seeing is much more neutral. Bright Eyes is more gold. Hot Chocolate is a little bit more purple undertoned. Okay. Then we get into You Complete Me, which is also a sale shade right now. You can probably see a little bit more of a difference. So this is hot chocolate, but this one is also got more of that. It's got way more. It's got more like that, I call it burgundy, that reddish undertone to it. So it's not quite so neutral. It's not really burgundy in my opinion, but it is when compared to this, right? It doesn't look as brown though, as these three do. So can you see how they're just, they're all so beautiful. I love a good metallic, but they're all so similar. Um, but having some of these in your arsenal can really help when, let's say, you want to use a nice mauve transition shade. You know, sometimes if it if you try it with a shade like this, it's too similar in tone and it looks like one shade all over. And you need to pull back and go with a little bit more of a neutral as your shimmer so you can see that contrast between, say, the warm and the cool. So, if I was using Lullaby, I know I'm gonna get a really good contrast if I use something warmer like Bright Eyes and it's really gonna show me that on the eye. I hope that makes sense. So I used to think Gold Digger was so similar to Bright Eyes as well, just a little bit more gold and it is and I do feel like there's enough of a difference. So there's Bright Eyes, here's Gold Digger. But can you see? It's just, it's more of a gold shade. I wouldn't consider this so much of a brown. Um, Bright Eyes is much more neutral with just a little bit of gold in it. And then Gold Digger is more gold, a little bit of neutral. And then just because we're doing all these neutrals, then we'll go into Ginger, which is also a sale shade. One of my very favorites, it's that coppery tone. So it's kind of the opposite of the purple. It's got way more warmth in it. It's got that orange in the shade. I, I just remember so vividly how scared of it I was. And the first time I tried it, I was like, holy moly, this makes my eyes pop. Like, I loved it. I loved it. So pretty. And then let's see what else. I would say Two of the most similar, I say You Complete Me and Cranberry are similar in tone, different depths. So Cranberry is on sale. Here's You Complete Me and here's Cranberry. Cranberry is much more like it seems. It's much more of a burgundy type shade and You Complete Me is more of like a brown with burgundy undertone in my opinion. And you can tell by kind of looking at it. Okay, my next layer, mostly mattes going on and the do those like deep dark number five shades. Um, gosh, I don't know if there's anything that are just so super close, but 
let's go ahead and swatch some of them that are the most close. Okay, so Holly's on sale, Zion is not. Similar in tone, different depth. Zion is lighter, more of a four shade, and the Holly is more of a four five, meaning it can be a lot darker. Some shades that I feel like people often think are very similar. Okay, so this is Butterscotch, um, Tangerine, and Leo. And you can tell that they're in all different depths, but so that you can see, Butterscotch is obviously the most neutral. It's got a little bit of orange undertone in it. Tangerine is more of a brighter orange. And then Leo is more of a darker orange. I would say butterscotch is different enough that I love reaching for this as having a nice, warm, neutral um, transition shade. That's the one I go for. These two, I don't use them as a transition shade by themselves. I would probably use something like a little bit lighter. And then if I wanted that pop of color, I would just put one of these right above the hood. Since I use them in that way, they can be pretty interchangeable because both of them are gonna add that pop of color and warmth to my cool um, hood slash crease color. Does that make sense? So I, when this color first came out, I was like, that is just like cocoa. And now I'm like, you know what? It's really not. So Philly is a brown, a dark brown. Coco is a brown, a warm brown. Can you see the difference? Hopefully. Sometimes it's to tell on camera until you kind of blend them out. Philly is cooler and cocoa is warmer. Now I tend to sometimes actually mix up cocoa and revival, which is more of that plum, really dark plum shade, since I typically have both in my palette. Now you can see how similar those are. Revival's got a little bit more purple in it, and uh, Cocoa's got a little bit more brown. And then again, uh, Philly is a little bit cooler, but yet te technically it's still warmer than what I use every day for my brows, which is, which is the cool brown, okay? And then this looks warm next to Trust, which is very cool and then coal, which is what I use for liner, looks almost black in this light, but it is just a charcoal color. And they all look so similar from far away, don't they? Yet, I notice a difference on my eye. Like when I use Trust to line my eyes, I don't get the depth I want, so I go to coal. Um, I am pretty interchangeable between Cocoa and Revival, but Revival I like as liner better, Cocoa I like in outer corner better. It's just a touch lighter, meaning it blends better. So sometimes even though this subtle difference may not be super visible, even with this natural light, there are some differences. Yeah, you can't tell. That was Cocoa and Revival. They look alike. There's a couple that are very similar I feel like once they're on the eye, um, on in the 10, they do look pretty darn close. So here's Midnight. Technically, it's more of a blue undertone. It's more, I would consider this like a navy blue color. But Amethyst, which is on sale, is more of a dark purple. Can you see that? But man, it's a blue undertone purple. So they look super close. Now Amethyst, I don't know if you can tell on camera, is one of those that has a slight sheen to it. I think it's even classified as a matte, but to me, 
it's got a little bit of sheen similar to on Wednesday. Um, unlike Midnight, which is just fully matte. Okay, here's two sale colors that I feel like if applied in a certain way can look very similar. So one of my favorites of all time, this is Finn and it's pretty dark, right? And it's just straight up swatches dark. I use it as liner, outer corner all the time. Now, Snowbird is a newer shade and it has a very similar undertone, but you can tell it's a little bit lighter, but sometimes I will use this for a bronzy eye and I just like build it up more. And you can kind of tell how close they can be depending on how much product you're applying. So although Snowbird is lighter, if you apply more of it, it's gonna look just like Finn. Um, another one that's kind of similar is also on sale and that's Rigoletto. Um, and do you see how they just all kind of are in that same color family? It's a little bit more charcoal, I would say, this is a little bit more bronzy. To me, these two are much more bronzy. This one just has more depth, but the sheen it gives is that bronze glow. And then this has less of that, but similar undertone as Finn, if that made sense. And just so in case I cover all my bases, Junior Prom is the one that's more black with a sheen. So you can see more of that shimmer again. Kind of the same color family, not bronzy at all, more of the cool side because it's very much like a blue undertoned gray black. Crazy thing is all four of these are on sale right now. They're so beautiful. It would probably be a faster video to swatch the ones that have nothing else similar, like, like Moscow. Moscow looks nothing like pictured online, kind of like Everest. Nothing else is anywhere close to it, even though online it looks like it it looks like other shades, but it really isn't. Isn't that pretty? It's more of like that red undertone, orangey red. Okay, I am feel like I could go on the browns and all of that for so long. So let me just end with some cool undertoned shades because I feel like a lot of people are looking for that. And there's a little difference between some of them. I always have said, have in your arsenal a warm undertone brown and a cool undertone brown. That way you can always use them when you need them, right? So I know I tend to gravitate toward my warm browns, but I use cools a lot, especially when my when the eye just looks off. I will pull in my cool, I will add that shadow. So of course the most famous cool is gonna be basic. So I'm gonna go from lightest to darkest, basic. Nice, cool, medium tone, four shade. It's a nice shadow, right? Then we got, not too long ago, we got cafe. And cafe is a little bit darker but actually has more purple undertone. And I don't know if you can truly see it. It's getting one step closer to that mauve territory, okay? Then I would say, let's go into Lullaby. Lullaby is a full-on mauve four shade in my opinion. And you can tell on here, it looks more mauve in comparison to Cafe. Cafe looks more gray, but then when you swatch Oak, which is the coolest and darkest next to it, you can kind of tell if you were to take that out, how much more purple Cafe has in it than Oak and Basic. But they're all cool, okay? So those purple undertones are cool. And also, when you get into more of those green undertones, technically it's neutral, but it's it's more cool than neutral in my opinion. So we have bird, okay? 
has more olive in it. Okay, and then labyrinth, which is way more olive and way darker. Okay, and sometimes you can't tell the difference until they're swatched next to each other. So if you compare this one and this one, basic and bird, you can see how much more green undertone is in this. And then oak and labyrinth, how much more green, you might not be able to tell. But then you put it next to an actual green and it doesn't look green at all. It looks gray, right? So that's Ivy League. So do I think you need all of these cool shadows? Absolutely not. If you wear nothing but cool tones, then you're probably gonna wanna have a nice variety. Maybe have something a little bit more mauve, maybe have something that you can wear in your brows or as liner, um, like oak is a great one. I always would say start with basic or oak. Basic is really light, great for those lighter skin tones. Oak is greater for darker skin tones. I can easily wear this in the crease lightly or build it up for more, more depth in the outer corner. And so oak has always been my go-to for like adding shadow or contour to the eye. But then we got all these other shades and I'm like, oh, now you have the option of using something with a little bit more green undertone. It just adds that variety, but you don't need them all. So I'd say if you want something with a little bit more purple in it, get Lullaby if you want a purple eye. If you want to keep it more neutral, then there's Cafe. If you want something a little bit more green, Bird is a great option other than Bubba and Basic. But I don't think you need all of them. Because when they're on the eye, will you be able to tell a huge difference? Now, I feel like sometimes what you're combining them with can make the difference, but I could wear those interchangeably with the same other eye colors. I don't think you'll be able, to, you would be able to notice a difference, to be honest, because they're all gonna give the similar vibe. My opinion, nothing else is really similar. Um, Eve and Ken are two are on sale. And they look really similar in the 10 and but then when you swatch them, they're different enough in my opinion. Like this is much more burgundy, this one's much more mauve. Do you need both? Probably not, if you're just using them as a liner or outer corner. So I would say the other one to compare to those would be Gilded. One of my favorites, in my opinion, it's most similar to Eve. Okay, so this is Gilded, Eve. When looking at them in natural light, Ken, way more purple. Gilded is much more coppery, um, has more red in it. And then Eve has more purple in it than Gilded does, but not nearly as much as Ken. So do you need all of those? Probably not, although these are three of my favorite shades. I love this, like I use these and I use Revival, which is that dark matte. And I use all of these as liner. In that color family, that is one of my favorite color families. So you might, and now, I, now let me preface this by saying I never ever would wear all of these on an eye at the same time. And if I was wearing this color family, I wouldn't also, pick a shade really similar in depth to one of those colors. Let's say I was gonna go in and this is pomegranate. I wouldn't use this as liner and put this on as my crease color. Like they're gonna, they're gonna look like one color when you're done, especially if you then put on a color like cranberry on the lid. You might be able to see a distinction of shimmer and mattes, but it can look all like one shade and that's probably not the best example because it's really dark, but you guys understand the point. Um, 
So when you're picking a color you really love, pick one or two shades from the color family. This is why I say it's so important to have your staple shades, those neutrals, having a nice cool tone neutral, warm neutral, neutral neutral, and having those at different tones so you can add those to your eye look. So I will wait till the next video to explain all of that. But I show you these color families doesn't mean, oh, I love those colors. I'm going to wear them all at once. Um, if you're drawn to that color family, there's nothing wrong with having all of those shades. Just know that you're going to have to mix and match with those basic neutral staple shades as well. All right. I've talked long enough. Time to get some watching. First off, warm undertoned light neutrals. We have Cupcake, Drift. Sabrina, Rome, Chai, Stay Golden, Riviera, Graceland. Next we have the cool undertoned light shades, starting with Unicorn, Aries, Pup, Everest, Glass Slipper, Venus, Stardust, and Shenandoah. Next, we have the pink undertone shades, starting off with Soulmate, Paris, Mama, On Wednesdays, Peppa, Angel's Landing, Sis, Tawanda, Claire, Mihiha, and La La Land. All right, more warm undertones. Now we're getting into the yellow to peach to orange or golden undertone. First off, we have As You Wish. Hopefully you can see that duochrome purple chameleon shade there. Then we have Valencia, Blondie, Crush, Havana, Tangerine, Leo, Bright Eyes, Gold Digger, Ginger, and Dollywood. Back to cool undertones with our mauves, plums, and purples. First off, we've got London. Gigi, Bend and Snap, Lullaby, Cafe, Ken, Amethyst, Revival, and As If. Back to warm undertones. Here we're getting into red undertones. It can be anywhere from red orange to red purple. So first off, we have Moscow, You Complete Me, Zion, Cranberry, Holly, 
Eve, Gilded, and Pomegranate. Now let's get into some neutrals. They might lend a little towards one spectrum, whether warm or cool, but for the most part, they're very neutral. First of all, we have Foxy, Snowbird, Hot Chocolate, Bird, Labyrinth, Rigoletto, and Finn. Now let's get into those neutrals that are clearly either warm or cool undertoned. So starting off with warms, we have Bubba, Butterscotch, Sedona, Philly, and Cocoa. And then on to the cool side, we have Basic, Oak, Trust, Coal, Junior Prom, which is the only shimmer here, and Salem. All right, last but certainly not least, we have our cool undertoned blues and greens. First up is Atlantic, Bayou, Duke, Dabadi, Rain, Emerald City, Number 33, Midnight, Ivy League, and Denim. And bonus points for whoever saw that guy right there. The cat sleeping the whole time. I hope that was helpful when you are comparing shades as you're building your eyeshadow collection. As always, if you ever have any questions about two shades or comparing any of them, just holler at me. Contact information is down below, as well as that link for the eyeshadow resource to go straight to your inbox. If you're needing a color match for Saint or needing help picking your eyeshadows, check out my color match request down below. Tell me everything you need and how you like to wear your makeup and I'd be happy to help you out. It is in the drop box below the video as well as in the pinned comment. As always, thank you guys so much for being here and watching. Be sure to leave your comment down below on what is your pain point with eyeshadow. I would love to be able to help you out and I'll see you next week. Love you, bye.